Haley, and I am here at Comic-Con with one of my favorite artists, Becky Clinton, and I'm so excited to be here. How is the con going for you? The con has been amazing. Heck, listen to my voice. This is how amazing it's been, the proof. Um, this is one of like the biggest, craziest shows I think I've ever been to. And I've been going since like 2004, but it's always such a pleasure because it's like, you know, you see all your friends from all over the world, and I'm sharing a booth with like Fabio Moon, Gabriel Bond, Rafael Albuquerque, who are in from Brazil, and Jill Thompson too, who's phenomenal, and Andy Belanger, and you know, I live with him, so I see him all the time, but it's still really cool to see them all here, and like, and I see so much new stuff. Oh, and I, I bought an original piece of art from Joseph Clement Cole from 1906, and it's like still freaking me out. It's in my hotel room right now, and I'm, I can't get over it, so really cool. So you just had a spotlight panel. What was that like? Oh, that was my first like spotlight. I've done like panels that are kind of small. But I think Brian Wood and I did one together, and that was like the smallest one I'd ever done. It was just me and him. But at least I had Brian there as like, you know, to help out. Uh, Jimmy Aquino from Comic News Insider actually was hosting it with me, and he was moderating. And I've been a good friend of his for a while, so he uh, kind of helped me out. I was like, Jimmy, can you please get on stage with me because I can't do this alone. So he helped out, and it was really like. It was like standing room only, standing room only, and it was like, blew my mind, because here I was like, maybe two people will come. Like before that, people were tweeting, like I think two people were like, I'm going to the Becky Clinton panel. I was like, oh, one, two, three, three people will be there, that's nice. So it was kind of like mind blowing that it actually filled up and, you know, I was able to engage for an hour without crying or anything. <laughs> it was, I liked, I enjoyed it, it was a good, and, thank uh, you, thank you. But um, so you've gotten, I think a couple, uh, I think there's something that people don't know about you is that you write yourself too. So you've got The Mire and The Wol and Wolves. Yeah. Um, so those stories, um, just what what should people know about them? Um, I've been doing like self-publishing for a, since I started. And I the last graphic novel I wrote was East Coast Rising for Tokyo Pop back in 2007. So since then I've just been working with writers almost exclusively. And anything I did on my own was really like a small thing. So the, a few years ago, I decided to get back into writing. And I was like, I need to learn how to write it again. And not that I ever really knew how to write in the first place. I was kind of just blindly like, oh, what am I doing? Um, so this is kind of me learning how to write and trying to figure out my own voice and my own way of storytelling. And they're, they're both kind of, since I grew up reading fantasy books, this is kind of like back to that. And they're both like medieval, um, supernatural horror with like some romance so it's that you know gothic romantic you know chain mail with wolves uh, I got this kind of poetic sense from it was that ever uh, something that you intended for yeah um, I mean I think it, it was actually written first for an anthology in Japan um, so my friends and I went to Japan and we were uh, exhibiting at a show called Komitia which is kind of like an independent uh, not really any fan dojenshi, but like more indie stuff. Uh, so we wanted to have a little thing to put together for that. So um, I ended up releasing it in English, like on its own. And it was like, I, I don't know. I think because I wrote it for a Japanese audience, I guess. And then when I went to look back and publish it in English, I had lost the script, my original English script. And then I felt like too much of an asshole to be like, hey, my translator, you know, be like, can you translate this back into English from Japanese? So I had to rewrite it. And then in rewriting it, I discovered things that I could make it better. And so it was kind of a, a weird process where I did the whole thing and then I went over it again and like threw out pages and redrew some stuff and added things. So it's kind of, it was an organic process and, you know, I came at it kind of from that, that way. Hi, I'm Becky Clunin and you are watching Nerd Locker, a place for your inner nerd.